Hi, it's Philo. Today, we are saying goodbye to 2022 and to welcome 2023, we are setting up January. And the theme this month is hourglasses. So first, let me show you how I did this pattern. First, I took a vellum paper and cut it to the size of my bujo. And then I drew circles with the help of my circle ruler. I distribute them evenly through the page. Then I flip the vellum paper and draw again the circles so that they appear on my notebook. So I can keep this vellum sheet for all my patterns through the year. And then I draw the subject of the theme of the month in a piece of vellum paper and I transfer them inside the circles. I chose this theme after watching Pinocchio by Guillermo del Toro on Netflix. I really loved it. It's a very good adaptation of the very famous tale in stop motion. In this movie, hourglasses are used as a symbol for time, life and death and I found it really cool, so I decided to do a theme around that. The cover was actually a bit more tedious to draw than I expected, so I didn't do any pattern on the other pages, though I did draw more hourglasses of course. If you were here in January last year, you saw my cabin in the wood theme with pine needles. I wanted to give this theme a bit more of a wintry vibe and I thought this was perfect to include in between our glasses. Then I simply framed the page to give it a bit of a structure and stamped the header on craft paper to create a bit of a contrast. So although it's not the quickest setup, obviously, it's very repetitive, it has many advantages. It's easy to do, it's easy to adapt to any theme you can think of, and it eliminates the pressure you have when you have only one big doodle on the page and you feel like you have to do it perfectly. Here my hourglasses have a lot of imperfections, but you don't really see it because you see the whole picture. For my memory spreads, I doodled some hourglasses and then added pine needles to a piece of craft paper. Then for the header, I used my very last piece of black label. I can't find any with a matte finish. They are all shiny. So if you live in Spain, and you find one. Tell me in the comments, please. Now with the monthly spread. Lately, during the last few months, I've been using a calendar with small three by four boxes for each day and it was enough for me but now that I'm creating more content here on YouTube especially um, with my new book related series I may need more space so maybe I start doing bigger calendars again or just start creating a specific content planner we'll see Anyway, I started doing small hourglasses on the left page and I don't really like it. So in the end, I opted for a big hourglass on the right page and I love it. <laughs>
Like in the movie, I wanted to represent time, life and death in this doodle. So I added a moon, a sun and a cloud, as well as this climbing plant, starting with bare roots and ending in green leaves. It sounds so dramatic and serious for me. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know how it turned out symbol-wise, but I think it looks cute and that's enough for me because I don't pretend to ask myself metaphysical questions every time I look at this calendar. So it's okay. <laughs> Finally, adding the header for the focus section and then the book section, which is quite new. I don't know how many books I will read in January. Don't have a um, very clear TBR list because uh, here in Spain we celebrate the three wise kings and they are the ones who bring the presents. So my TBR for January will partly depend on what they bring to me. And we'll soon see if I've been a good girl. Finally, I added these beautiful gingham washi tape that I love and totally forgot about the numbers in the daily boxes but I added them later. This month all my weeklies have a vertical layout and they're pretty minimalist. for Dutch doors to see the mini calendar on the left and I doodle another hourglass on a piece of craft paper so it creates a contrast without having to color it. The headers for each weekly have to be different because I have a visual memory, if I have memory at all. <laughs> so these first ones are vertical. I'm adding this new section in my weeklies for things I'm waiting for, but I don't really know which day they're happening. So for example, orders I'm expecting, or calls, this kind of thing. Even though I'm getting tabs, don't be fooled, in the end it wasn't working with my work schedule, so I had to cut them out, and they are just simple Dutch doors. Here I added little stars instead of pine needles and actually I think it was working really good but I didn't have time to add it to my cover or monthly spread because the sun was setting so you just have it on my weeklies and that's it. But if you recreate this theme 
I strongly recommend to add stars everywhere. It looks so cute and cozy and wintry. So yeah, I'm speeding it up because each weekly is just slightly different, but the color palette, the frame and the washi tape make it all cohesive. And if you're new here, I always do this kind of grid on every other daily boxes because um, it makes the spread less strikingly empty and it's kind of more motivating to use. This is another layout I use a lot with the circles. I think it works with everything. It's been a while since I last handwritten my dailies. Usually I use my stamps more, but this time I wanted to practice my calligraphy. On the right page of the last weekly, I have a section for next month's to-do or appointments with a mini calendar of February and another section for my work schedule. And that's it, now let's go with the final flip through. If you like this video, leave me a comment below. Have you watched Pinocchio? Or what's your favorite tale and is there a movie adaptation I could watch? And Happy New Year everybody! I'm so happy and grateful to start a new year with you guys. If you celebrate, happy Three Rise Kings! And I'll see you soon with another video. Till then, enjoy planning!